what is going on guys welcome back to another high adventure video we are right at the start of the 2024 mini lobster season and i appear to be the only one up Ooh, what's up big sexy oh good morning as you guys can see we've got all the stuff ready to go. I think it is going to be a gorgeous day. Oh, gotta unlock it. Let's see what it's like out here. Whew. Bit breezy, but that was to be expected. It is definitely gonna be kind of a windy first day of mini lobster season. We kind of need that going in based on the weather last night, but hopefully that just means not as many people will be out where we're trying to go because first day of mini lobster seasons, probably gonna be pretty chaotic. You up? What? Good morning. Rise and shine, it's butt whooping time. Hey, turn this thing on. Oh, press on, that'd help. There it is. Gotta hit ourselves with the pickle juice this morning so we don't get cramps. Uh. Ooh, tail. Pickle juice and coffee, not, not the best combo at 5.30 in the morning. Uh. All right, going on the bar for the road. You guys ready? Yeah, Let's do this, kicking off. 2024 mini lobster season has officially begun. Dawn's early light. Are our lobsters still there? Hopefully. So they didn't get blown away. Whew. It is a little bit breezy. Look at that big old powerful light there. Bobby, what do they call that again? What are they at? Bully netting? Bully netting. Bully netting, y'all. There were literally like 30 boats at midnight last night out in front of our condo. And they weren't even that big of an area. Like maybe the size of a football field. All bully netting. Dropping the big lights down and trying to net lobster. It didn't even look like fun. We could hear the generators from where we were. And we were like 500 yards away. It was crazy. But looks like we're in for a little bit of a breezy day. But hopefully that shouldn't affect the lobster too much. Biggest thing is, is the spots that we marked going to have pe a bunch of people on them or not. There are going to be people out there. But... Depends just on how many, really. Bruh. We're gonna catch some lobster. What's the what's the expectation for today? Limits. Limits. Limits, y'all. Limits from the keys are six per person. We're not worried about Bobby and his limit because he's gonna be probably scuba diving unless we just find a bunch down here. But for Trace and I, who we're kind of like free diving basically, no, no scuba diving. We're gonna be sitting, I don't know, probably about four to eight feet of water max. We gotta get some limit switch. It can be tough to do, but if you're gonna do it, like right now, mini season, opening, this is the time. All right, y'all, it's looking like the early morning wake up's paying off. We've got nobody, nobody in the spot where we were marking lobster, and obviously that's gonna change, but Let's drop in, man. Great way to start. Let's go put that first bug in the bag. So that's, uh, that's part of it. Yeah, that's part of it. All right, out and on it early. The first thing, as you guys can see from this, uh, it was a lot murkier than it had been when we had scouted the day before. So that was definitely a curveball we weren't kind of prepared for because we're only free diving in about six to eight, maybe 10 feet of water. Here we're in about seven feet of water. First lobster I see though, I'm having to kind of dive down 
even in like six feet of water to get a better look at the bottom. Saw this guy's antenna sticking up though, and we were able to poke him about 10 minutes in to the drop. Like I said, we had gone and scouted, so we had had some areas already we knew that we had seen lobster in, so we were pretty pumped to get out on this side. So we threw him right in the bag there. I'll tell y'all what, next year I'm definitely going to invest in one of those lobster hotel bags. Just makes it way easier to drop your bugs in and you're not having to uh, fiddle around with really what's not the right bag for this. But as you guys can see here, visibility just absolutely terrible. Same thing with this guy though, saw the antenna poking out. So we're able to tickle him out, get him out. We're trying to get that lasso uh, around the tail. Now I don't remember if this one was a keeper or not. I don't think it was. And again, because the visibility was so poor, it was kind of hard to tell us, but you know, better safe than sorry. Better to just go ahead and grab one and bring him up. This you can see I missed him. You can see with the weeds on the bottom. See everything's just really rocking back and forth. This was the Atlantic side. We had decided to go on the Atlantic side because we knew first day of mini season was going to be absolutely nuts. And with poor weather conditions, people would be avoiding the Atlantic side and going to the Gulf side. And we really didn't care to be just absolutely swamped by people. So we kind of played the hunch, tried to go for a little bit more or I should say less favorable conditions, uh, but be able to have more um, more area to roam and to be able to hunt by ourselves and not have to worry about a ton of other boats. Kind of a safety thing there as well. I had to let that one go because he was just barely short, like I said. Not being able to see him clearly, it's kind of difficult to uh, depict whether or not that was a keeper. But, hey, we caught him, measured him up. Now, you can see there are a couple here in this hole. The guy to the left looked a little bit too small. This guy right here, though, just based on, again, the size of the antenna, looked like a solid keeper. You can see here, like, it's just hard to see. And I mean, I'm only about six feet away from this lobster. This is a lobster in clear conditions. Yesterday, I could have seen from, you know, 15 feet away. And now I'm six feet away from it. And like, I'm just lucky I swam over the top of it. But this is why you go and you scout ground because you know what ground's good and what you can just skip over. This was a section of bank that there were very specific areas, probably maybe 50 yard stretches where the ground was like this. It was that Swiss cheese you're looking for that we knew had lobster. And then there would be 50, 100 yard stretches where there was just absolutely nothing. So the scouting for us really paid off. We marked places up and we were able to just skip, quite frankly, a lot of bank and save a lot of time looking over stuff that just was not good. I think this was the second keeper of the day. Got the lasso around the tail got him up to the surface, stuffed him in the bag. You see, I got my little measuring stick there. I've got that tied around my wrist. I've got links to like the tickle stick and to that as well below. So if you guys want any of this stuff, go check it out. But it's pretty excited. Got a couple in the bag to start the morning off. Oh man, visibility is terrible down there. It's really bad. Wasn't counting on that. I was more worried about people being in the spot. Didn't really think about visibility being cheeks McGee but we're making it happen two so far Woo. there you guys go right there. that's awesome Woo. that's gonna taste good I've seen about four or five smaller ones but got a couple a couple so far to start the morning day's just getting started let's keep it going Hey, I'll just drop right in the live ball right there. Bro, it's hard to find the spot yeah, I know. that we were at yesterday just because of the visibility. Yeah. I think the only good thing about the visit, about it being so bad is that you're not going to have a lot of people over yeah, here. No if we can find our locations though, I mean we found a couple, we can keep putting lobsters in the boat. So we're going to head to the next marker, dude. Let's keep it at it. Come on. All right, so we're back in a second spot. Again, this is what... I was talking about earlier with just hunting down spots. We actually only moved about a hundred yards with the boat 
on the same stretch of bank, just 100 yards, because we knew that there was a certain area that we didn't even bother looking in. And we dropped in, found another nice size lobster right here, good quality one, was able to tickle him out. I'll tell you all something. There's something about when you drop that lasso around that lobster, man, and you get that thing caught up, especially when you see big antennas sticking out like that. Like when you're searching and you see those two royal thick antennas sticking out of a hole, there's like no better feeling, especially, I don't know, just, just in, in all of fishing and diving world. When you, when you see that lobster sticking out of the hole and you see those antenna and it's like, oh, that's a big one. There, oh man, I just, there's, it's hard to describe until you actually do it, but it is so much fun. Got another one here. Again, same area about maybe eight minutes after I found that one. There were no areas because I don't live down here and, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a local. Don't really have the opportunity to uh, do a ton of scouting. I'm not finding ledges that hold 30, 40, 50 lobster in them. I'm doing a little bit more hunting. I have to hunt a little bit more. But again, that's why we went to the Atlantic side because we were just like, look, we're already kind of behind the eight ball here with uh, not being locals. So we don't need to go and try to hunt, you know, in an area where everybody else and their mother's going to be hunting. So we knew we weren't going to find anywhere where we could load up, uh, you know, in 10 minutes. But we just wanted enough bank where we, could, where we were able to hunt in peace, so to speak, and, and be able to bag a limit, even if it took most of the day. And we were able to find that here. We got real lucky on day one. Lucky. Not so much. I mean, we did get lucky, but I mean, that was part of the scouting trip. So the scouting trip, I have to say, really paid off. We spent a good three, four hours the day before looking through this. You can see a bunch of juvenile lobster in here. They're going to be ready for next year. Just still cool to see, man, tucked up under this weed line, this, this grass ledge here. I was actually really surprised there weren't any big ones because there were about eight or ten along this grass line. This is what you want here, but uh, all little ones. Poked a few out, saw this guy right here. Uh, wasn't sure, again, in the dirty water if he was big enough, but he was too small and just let him go. I should have four. I mean, I'm, I'm happy I have three. Woo -hoo! Yeah, we've got to take a break because of that right there, but Trace ended up getting one. What do we have total, dude? Six, Six total? Check it out, check it out. Oh, man. Look at that! Got a pretty solid live well full of lobster considering that the conditions are less than optimal. We've definitely been throwing a curveball with just the um, the water clarity today. Let this blow over and then we're gonna get right back there. In fact, it's about time for Bobby to go diving. We were here yesterday though at this marina and we've got a tasty treat. So I'm not too unhappy at the fact that we've got to take a little break. So let's go get some food, re replenish, renourish our bodies, and then we'll get back after it. Oh. Yep, definitely say we just barely beat that. I have with me a key lime pie. Open this bad boy up. Bro, what'd you, what did you get? Chocolate fudge. Oh man, that looks good. That looks real good. Look at that right there. It's even got like the uh, pie crust on it. Mm. I can't bite ice cream. My teeth are too sensitive. Mm. Dude, this is ridiculously good. How I, We happened to stop in here yesterday when we were scouting for lobster. We got we did the same thing, didn't we? Wasn't there a storm? Yeah. yeah storm yesterday. There are always storms down here. Stopped in. Bobby grabbed one of these. That may be a Key West business model. Local marina finding something you can sell there. People duck in during thunderstorms. I tell you what, I'm coming to this. I don't feel like we just need to come every year to this marina just for this. This is ridiculous. Look at Hmm. How long y'all think it's gonna last? Hopefully not. Long. Hopefully not. We gotta get Bobby down there on the bridges. Y'all, I'm still working on this gem thing. Everybody else is done. Bro, I'm about to go get another one. <laughs> <laughs> you get down too at the time I'm mm -hmm. working this thing over. Gosh. And I'm, the Florida Heat ain't doing any favors either. Huh. Flick faster. Oh, gosh. Bro, who tied this? My dad. Oh, he did a great job. <laughs> I did do a great job. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back in the boat. Seems the storm has passed. Time to head back out. I got to get my limit, man. Trace what? 
think there's a chance I get mine before he dies. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure Trace read the instructional video of the lasso. <laughs> Chase. I should probably have three or four, honestly. Chase said he's missed. Yeah, like, what did you say? You missed like three with the lasso? Two with the lasso and one got away. That's all right. I remember. Not everybody should be a cowboy, I guess. I remember the first time I went lobstering. <laughs> oh, ooh, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Bobby getting ready to drop in. Trace, how deep are we, man? 15 foot. He's going to drop in at this abandoned bridge right here. Look at that big old thing. How comfy you feeling, Bobby? Feel good. Feeling good, feeling good. Yeah. Typically, obviously, the deeper you go, the more lobster there are. And this stuff just doesn't get hammered because there just aren't as many scuba divers. So, cross our fingers, he comes up with his limit. You have a deal? Yeah, I do. Huh? Yeah, you good. <laughs> All right, we got Bobby on the descent. Now, if there's a way that you're almost guaranteed to get a limit, I would say it's probably scuba diving just because it's deeper water, fewer people there, and there are just more lobster in the deeper water. Now, he checks his gauge, though, for his air and notices it's quite low. Um, so he's got to work fast. He found this lobster, real nice one, one of the biggest ones of the day. And you also get bigger lobster, typically deeper as well. So you can see this guy here. He's able to tickle him out, get a lasso around him, drop him in the bag. He also agrees we need to get some of them uh, lobster hotel bags. But uh, we found out later, actually, as he uh, works that lobster into the bag there, he's going to check his um, his air gauge again right here, and he notices it's dropping really rapidly. And we found out later he actually, the tank that he had rented was faulty. So it cut his dive way short, unfortunately. Hi, right, y'all. Well, we had some technical difficulties with Bobby's scuba gear. He actually ran out of air. Like, he was only down there for like 12 minutes ran out of air so something's not working quite right on uh in all the equipment and i'm not sure i'm not a scuba person but something definitely ain't right fortunately he was able to get back up though he did get another lobster though so we're up to seven on the day and we're just gonna get right back out there chase i gotta jump in i think bobby's probably gonna jump in as well we just gotta go basically free dive free swim this the rest of the way so here we are, dive number three, dropping back in after the storm had moved out. Now, again, this is the, still the same stretch of bank, just a little bit different area, and boom, I get right off the bat. Found a real nice one hanging out under this ledge. Got a couple of them under there. That was a nice one, but this one was even better, and I wasn't sure about the other one. In fact, I think he ended up swimming off. You can see him kind of moving off in the distance there. I knew for certain, though, this was the big one. This was the keeper. I was able to lasso him right out. Man, that was a that was a really nice bug. Trying to get my limit. I was at four at this point, so I just needed a couple more. That one will do it right there. That'll get me close to the goal. And uh, it wasn't long, maybe about 10 minutes after I found that one drop down. Look at that guy right there. I mean, is that not just a beautiful picture right there, y'all? Don't tell me that doesn't get you excited. Look at those big old, big old antenna sticking up right out of that nice little coral hole there. Love it when they're occupied. I've found a couple of places like that that come up and you think there's going to be something in it and there's not. But I was also fortunate enough as the day went on, the weather started to clear and that sun get a little higher in the sky definitely helped with the visibility. We went from about maybe five, six foot of visibility up to about probably about 12 to 14 feet. So that helped a lot and I was able to bag the limit pretty quickly on my third drop. Look at that one right there, y'all. That is the biggest one I'm pretty sure that I've gotten today. Biggest for last. Oh, man, that was awesome. I'm man in the boat now because I've got my six. Chase and Bobby are in the water. Oh, my gosh. I don't know why. It just feels amazing. Amazing to have my limit. To have actually come out here, beating the odds, especially with how bad the weather's been. Oh, Trace has one. Trace has one. Got this one. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. That just looks amazing. Alright, let's go pick up Trace. Bobby's getting ready to drop in since I got my six now. You got yourself one, bruh. I don't know. It's looking like a pretty good bug to me. It'll be close. That'll be breath. There we go. Here's another one. Yeah, I'll well, hold on. 
Yeah, he did. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Let's go, dude. I just got my stick. Dude, it's a big old toe, too. <laughs> All right, let me unload. I'm doing it here. Hey, get back out there, man. Dude, the bottom of your dog is freaking amazing. I mean, that's five minutes in. Bang that one. Dirt! <laughs> Another good looking bug for the live well. Sounds like a good one. I'll measure a lot for you. Just double check. Yeah, I'll double check. <laughs> Look at that. Boyo. Oh, yeah. Here, get back in there. Alright. Add a baby. Let's go. Where's my dad at? You might want to do He's that. right there. He's right there, right behind you. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! Trace has another one! Another one! I'll hand it up. Dude, do you want to take my, my uh, measuring stick? Yeah, bro, you good? You're good. Get back there, dude. Now that's four! Woo! Back in them. Oh, it's starting to look good in there. Guys, I tried to grab that lobster. I didn't have gloves on, and he just flicked his tail. Totally just cut me up. Oh, and the salt water makes it feel so much better. Ah, gonna need a band aid for that one. Woo. I'm glad I'm done right now. Oh, Bobby's on one. Oh, that looks like a good one. That's a porker. I don't even need to measure that one. got a nice one that is a nice lobster dudes we stumbled on a spot and we're turning it around with that that air tank not being able to work for bobby all of a sudden we have just popped let's see i got mine just got two we've gotten four in like the last 15 minutes we got a good hole right here this is what coming out here looking around scouting it's paying off yes yeah, i'm just a whole vibe right now bobby and trace Going after it. I'm enjoying some spicy Cajun pretzels. Oh, crack it open a Pepsi. I feel very accomplished. Very accomplished. You got one, bro? You got one? Nice, you go. You got one? Yeah, you got one. I think he said there's another one over here. Oh, we got two. He got two. What? <laughs> Get out of here! Hey, we'll measure it. We'll measure it. They just doubled up. Hand me that one first. Oh, I got it in here. There we go. Just talk. Can you toss him over? Uh, yeah, this guy's too small right here. Yeah. This one is. Look at that right there. A little too small. So we eat him back in. He's got one. Yeah, that was bigger than it looked. Yahoo! Nice, dude. That's so impressive. You got two at once, though, man. Yeah, freaking. That one was in my hand too. Uh, nice one. I think that's five for Trace now. Get in there, big old biggin. Oh, he's got one. Trace has one. I think that's his limit. I think that's his limit. Four small ones. Tip them out. Nice. Found him amongst the little. There, we got lobster on the deck. Look at that. Bruh. Having gloves is a game changer. Oh yeah, 100%. Dude, did you just limit out? Yeah. Let's go! Yeah! Did you gotta drop him in there. Gotta do the honors. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Dude, not gonna lie, it was a slow start for you today. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, we moved out to this spot. Just absolutely popped him. Not a bad one in on you. No, that's a good one to head on my dude. It's one of those you don't even have to measure, dude. I cannot overstate how much fun this is. I am just... Having a dang blast Lobstering here. Lobstering the blast. Yeah. When you're finding them, it's even more fun, too. Yeah. Is that 18? That's 18. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I just dropped in to help Bobby scout for the rest of his. We just officially got a three-man limit opening. Woo! Oh, my gosh. Y'all, check this out. 
we persevered on the Atlantic side. But that is the payoff right there. 18 lobster. 18 lobster. Oh my gosh. Let's get back. Cooler full of lobster. Let's cook some of these up. Y'all want to cook some lobster up? Yeah. Let's cook some lobster up. Boom! That's how it's done on High Adventure Video. Alright y'all, back at the Hacienda. Trace is going to show us how to clean some lobster. Trace, it's your time to shine, man. Alright, I'm going to grab one out of here. Alright. Okay, we're going to make it difficult, aren't you? Alright, we're going to flip it over. Okay. First. And you want to put them out of their misery. You yeah. want to make them easy to clean until you don't sit here and just watch them die. Right. Find the soft spot in their chest and then stick the knife in. And then you twist it around. You see now he is dead. Perfect. All right. Now you need a knife, and you're gonna take the knife, and you're gonna run it right up this. If I could ever get it up there, you're just gonna cut oh, around yeah. the top of the tail. Yeah. What's that like? Cutting the meat away? Yep. Okay. And then you grab the head and you twist it. Oh there you go. my! Oh, dude, look at all that meat coming out right there. Nothing left in there except. Oh, look this. at this. Just hollow. Now what do you do with him? You suck the head out. I mean, <laughs> technically I am going to need an antenna, so... Oh, wait, what gonna, you grabbing the antenna for? You're going to de-poop them. Wait, what? One. Set that there, and then you... Oh, you got he him. gone. Look at that big old tail right there. Oh, yeah. That costs about seven one. bucks in the store right now. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, you know, you just pulled an antenna off. Show me what you're doing with that. All right. Two. I think I cut it too thick. Hold up. Snap it one more place. So, we're going to break it there. Oh, so you want a thin piece of... Then a piece of antenna. And you're going to take it through there. Okay, through the vent. Yep. Using family-friendly terminology. <laughs> and once you get it through, the oh, spikes bruh. on it, pull out all the bad stuff in there, which is that right there. Oh, look at that. And you grab that, and there you go. Oh. You so you just basically, that. you basically, like on a shrimp, you just like de-pooped it. Yep. Okay. Oh. You go. Yeets it over the side. There's some happy fish under the boat. Perfectly clean tail. A perfectly clean tail. Bro. Excellent. Now you just have 17 more to go. That was really cool. All right. There you go. I actually never knew that. All right. Let's get to cleaning, dude. I'm going to get... Actually, you clean that. Let me go get a fire going so we can get these lobster over some open flame. Rickety bridge. Alright y'all, I have been using my Brio cooking setup the whole time I've been down here at the Keys. If you want any of this stuff, I've got links in the description below to it. Especially like this brand new griddle top. Absolutely love that, but I don't want to be throwing, I don't know what we'll do. We might do lobster tails up there, steaks down here, vice versa, I don't know. But we are ready to go that way. Bro, I'll clean up. look at that y'all. Oh man dude, well done. Well done. 18 tails. Mind if I steal a couple for the grill? Don't care. Thanks, bro. Man, I appreciate you cleaning all that up. Mm. Let's get some good fat ones here. Ooh, that looks like... Oh, my gosh. Dude, it's deceptive because, like, you look... When you first look at them, it's like, I don't know, man. Is that worth <laughs> the effort? And then, like, you get that whole tail, and it's like... Dude, that's like... It's like three quarters of a pound right there. Yeah. So, I mean, that is a lot of meat. All right. So, here is our setup. We have got some looks like ribeye steaks from the grill we're gonna do a little surf and turf y'all we're gonna do some steak we're gonna do some lobster first thing we're gonna do is watch this helicopter go by because i'm a man oh yeah america okay anyway let's go ahead first well, actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this butter big old chunk of it just like that in our pan throw in a little salt in there I'm gonna throw some parsley. Oh, organic. I'm just pulling stuff that we have in the rental here out. 
I'm kind of tossing it in to be downright honest with you. Then we'll throw some pepper in there as well. Last but not least, got some minced garlic. Prefer like the fresh garlic, but this will do as well. Not a biggie. I'm gonna bring it over. I'm gonna set them right up here. Next, we've got our lobster tail. I'm just going to cut right down the middle with my toadfish shears. Like that. All the way down. Right about there. I think what I do is I turn them around, crack all of that, open them up like shoe kind of fiddly work here and then I can lay it right on top of the shell something like that I'll get rid of that piece don't want that all right well he's not laying on top but you guys get the idea if I close the shell there we go cool I think I just did it looks pretty good to me let's get the rest of these done and we'll be ready for the grill all right we've got our sauce all cooked down we're just gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to it Perfect. I'm just throwing one log in at a time. That way kind of to control the heat a little bit if I can. Well, these lobster tails, I kind of had a hard time getting them out of the shell, quite frankly. I'll have to learn how to do that a little bit better. It's kind of one of those things like, it's like filleting fish. You know, you just got to do it a lot. But what we're going to do is we're just going to set that right there. Just like that. Take our next one and drop it there as well. Just like that. Bam. Now this one's interesting over here. This guy actually had just molted, so I can't really separate it from the shell. It's all soft. You might be able to actually eat, just eat that whole thing. I don't know, we'll find out. Just set him, just like that. All right, we got all our lobster on, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this butter, garlic, salt, pepper, parsley. I'm just gonna lather, oh my gosh, you guys see that? Look how he moves. We're gonna put that all over each tail, just like that. I think that's gonna be pretty good, y'all, hopefully. All right, got everything painted up. That's perfect. Now we're gonna come over here and let's grab our butter, throw some steaks on the griddle. Ooh, that's hot. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna squeeze that on there, spread it around. Oh, I almost straight lost that guy. Now, hold up, look out. Butter's on fire. Was not ready for this. Really did not expect the butter to catch catch fire. Definitely a new one for me. Um, okay, everything's under control. Oh, there goes the butter. Well, it's almost all gone. Okay. Well, I think the steaks are ready. Let's go ahead. Ah! Throw the steaks on. Now. <laughs> oh my. Ah! Ooh, that's hot. Careful. Careful there. I don't know if there's any way to put that out. I've just got some Montreal steak seasoning we're going to throw on this. And as you can tell, that's probably not going to take too long to cook. Goodness. Folks, we've got it going on here. I mean, we really have it going on. That's good. Yep, still looks like good flame in there. That oh, was absolutely amazing. Let's slide this over. Let's go ahead and flip these guys out here. Oh yeah. Yes sir. Put some seasoning on that. And we're gonna be good to go. All right y'all, so I think I did this backwards. I should have put these down on the grill to begin with, then flipped them. But I think everything's gonna turn out okay. I guess we'll find out. But that, I mean, it looks pretty good to me. We'll go through the taste test here in just a minute. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. I, I'm i more than a little bit excited for this right here, y'all. That is a pile of lobster. No doubt. No two ways about it. Ugh, gotta get out of the smoke. That is a pile of lobster. It's time to eat. All right. Folks, we're loading up. Oh my lord have mercy. Mm. Here we go. Bobby, would you ask a blessing for us, please? I will. Dear Lord, just want to thank you for this day. Just thank you for the success you've given us. We just thank you for friendships. 
And we'll just thank you for Trace and his, uh, being able to celebrate his birthday down here. We just ask you give us safe travels uh, home in the next few days when we go. And just ask you uh, give us safe, uh, safe travels as we go fishing tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Guys, I'm going to go with the lobster first. No time to waste. Man, I hope I didn't overcook this. You know what? Better to overcook than undercook because I've had shellfish poisoning and that is no fun. No bueno. No bueno. It doesn't sound bueno, so. Mmm. Ooh, hot. It's not. The shell is certainly hot. Oh my gosh. Not overcooked. Is it not overcooked? No. We're How good. did you? I'll cut, mom. Oh man. Oh, I got it with a little bit of juice from the steak. Mmm. How I cook the steak? Mmm. I cooked mine up a little bit. It's not shoe leather, but I, I've got pink in there. Oh I'll take goodness. that back. I love it. Oh. Mmm. That I'm, good too. I'm down with the steak. Oh my gracious. Maybe next time when we come down here, we can eat a little better. You know, we've kind of skimped. Yeah, I hate skimping, <laughs> especially on vacation. Have you had Maine lobster? Mm, it's been a long time. I don't it, know that I've ever had it. I, I wonder what the taste difference is. Uh, they say Florida, they say Florida lobster or Spanish lobster is sweeter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steak and lobster right there, bye. Oh. It's good tenderness too in the lobster. Mm -hmm. No, when you overcook it, it's rubbery. This is not rubbery. Okay. Good. My, there's a lot of pressure. Pressure but, mounts when you cook for yourself. You know, even if it's a little awkward, it's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> cook for other people though, man. You gotta, you you gotta bring your A game. I feel like. Yeah, this is delicious. Mm. Look at that big old piece, right into the melted butter. Mmm. Took a bite of shell. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Almost caught that casualty on live. That knife was going to flip up, and catch it right in the jugular. <laughs> I remember the first time I used the utensils. Golly. <laughs> oh, man. That was a close call. Well, YouTube fam, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on the first day of lobster season. Y'all, that was awesome. Let's do it again. What do you enjoyed say? it. Yep. Yeah, man, it was great. Awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and the recipes. And as always, we will see you in the next one. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Got the beef